This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and falling. Off the graduation stage. <laughs> like she came walking in just pointing in the direction she was going. I was getting excited. I was like, Tony Hawk's on tour? If my brother actually did trip on accident and fall off the stage, I too would be laughing. <laughs> I was Catherine Zeta-Jones and God was Renee Zellweger. <laughs> IFAF, Idaho Falls Weekly Informal Infotainment, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. On this Not Pioneer Day episode, oops, <laughs> we'll talk about meat tents. Yeah, not intense meat. Country crossover, McDonald's value meal is back, Pornhub blocked from Idaho, uh, graduation prank gone right. Our very own road rage incident. Oh, I'm so proud of Idaho Oof. Falls. Fireworks and maybe illegal ones, maybe right here in town. And um, some pants that will protect your tots. All right. If you're listening with your partner, your spouse, your significant other, you might want to take this show into the next room for a minute. Oh, yeah? We'll wait. <laughs> yeah. The new thing is, it's a challenge. Why does everything on the internet have to be a challenge? Yeah. It's not a challenge, it's dude. It's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Eat this Tide Pod challenge. Yeah. It's, uh, um, but uh, look at your spouse's search page on Instagram. Not mm -hmm. their home screen. That's just your feed. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. When you I hit the you magnifying mean. glass. Yeah. The one that's supposed to like be custom made for you by the algorithm. Uh huh. Yeah. Based on things you. Boy, you, you tap one <laughs> swimsuit model. Right. And that's all you get. Well, and here's the thing that drives me nuts. <laughs> there could be a billion different reasons why you're clicking on that photo. Uh -huh. You know? Right. You could be genuinely wondering, is that a stain on her swimsuit or a pattern? And then now all of a sudden your entire feed is Instagram models. This is a true fact. Our logo is actually based on a swimsuit ad that I saw. It is. I was like, I love that color combination. Right, and right. It and it looks like great. Pink, blue, and purple. It just totally works. It does. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway. But that's hilarious. Um, I know you've shown me your search screen. Yeah. You know what? I don't know if you've seen mine. I don't know if I have. Yeah, but I'm also not really on Instagram. I know it's like 99% critters. Okay. Yeah. But speaking of the internet and fun things on your feed this week... Have you heard about the Hawk Tua girl? <laughs> the what? Here you go. What's one move in bed that makes a man go crazy every time? Oh, you, you gotta give him that Hawk Tua and spit on that thing. You get me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, we've always got to catch folks up on the memes. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the funny thing. I actually saw something about this before you told me about it, and I couldn't figure out what it was because I just saw the words Hawk Tua. <laughs> And I didn't really know how to pronounce it. Did somebody? So I was like, Hawk Twa? Really misspell Utah that way? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to figure out if it was some kind of anagram or something. That's what we say out west, kids, is Hawk Utah. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, I had no idea what it was. And then you turn to me and you're like, hey, do you know what this Hawk Tua thing is? And I was like, no, but I saw it written somewhere and I didn't know what was going on. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> you and I both saw, this is how fast things move because mm -hmm. last week, it had just happened this week. It's old news. Right. Like we saw, we discovered the memes about it before we actually saw that video that yes. we just showed you. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so frustrating. It's as frustrating as seeing a hashtag, if you know, you know, and right. not knowing. Yes. Well, explain it to me, please. Yeah. OP. Yeah. Original poster. Mm -hmm. You know, but I found the video pretty quickly and I just have to say that um, she seems fun. <laughs> <laughs> And um, Jesus regrets dying for her sins. And can <laughs> well, I, I have your number? <laughs> well, I was going to say, are they really sins if they make people feel better? Really? There's, I mean, I if mean, you're helping some unfortunate soul out there. Marvin Gaye, sexual <laughs> healing. I know that's a thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really hot to and baby. <laughs> Three follow-ups. I'd like to get this first one out of the way just as soon as possible. I want to be absolved of my sins as quickly as soon on in the show as possible pioneer day isn't today yeah it's july i'm an idiot i had the right note in the wrong place right well and to be fair i think that you are slightly less at fault than i am because i lived pioneer days that was a big deal when i was growing up and i don't remember when it was well so. we'll talk about it again in a month <laughs> right idiot stupid stupid <laughs> 
Okay. Um, next follow up. Um, <laughs> we had a comment reminding us as we we had the Rocky Mountain oysters last week, mm-hmm. reminding us of the. Testicle Festival in Clinton, Montana. It lasted for 35 years. It ended in 2017 after a series of incidents, fatal crashes, stabbings, and lawsuits. Oh. But yeah, when you would drive to okay. from here to say Missoula. Uh-huh. It was on the, it was just east of Missoula a little bit. They would have a testicle festival and they would consume bull balls. Man, I'm kind of sad that that ended. And I, and I don't want to, we're not going to put it on the screen, don't worry, kids. But I do want to say that um, I did look into what we ate. Oh, okay. In Bozeman, Montana, last episode. Right. Those bowl Those Rocky Mountain oysters? Those, yeah, they're, um, so they come in, as you can imagine, egg form. Right, yeah. There, there's a reason why huevos means eggs and balls in Spanish. Mm-hmm. They're so big that they slice them. Oh. So what we had were thinly sliced oh. cross Pieces sections of, one. of okay. one big old... Big old <laughs> ball. Honking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they come like that. That makes a lot of sense, actually. But then as I was reading more about testicle festivals, <laughs> we uh, I guess we had one in salmon a couple of times. Oh, fun. Yeah. I'd go to Salmon for a, a testicle festival. Right, so let's let's Sounds bring like that fun. back. Ooh, yeah. I wonder if they do like buffalo testicles, buffalo balls. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think um, I think you can do pretty much any kind. I mean, yeah. I know that there was one like in Iowa uh-huh. where they like one of the first ones in the country. They uh, had turkey testicles. <laughs> Okay. Not here, kidding. <laughs> that's hilarious. And also, here's where I'm so dumb. I've been such a little dumb dumb today. Uh, I meant like buffalo the sauce. Oh. But of course, that could be interpreted as you meant actual bison buffalo. Balls. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that'd be exotic. Uh-huh. <laughs> that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> How big can turkey ones get? Well, I mean, turkeys are big bastards. Are they stuffed really in? Like that. Are they stuffed in with the turkey neck in the cavity at the Ooh. with the butter ball at Thanksgiving? I've never paid attention. I mean, maybe is that they part of be. the giblets? Maybe it should be. Are those Probably the not. giblets? I mean, I feel like we ate a lot of female turkeys for some reason. Uh. You know, when my mom was a kid, they would eat chicken feet. Oh like, yeah, like relatively often. I've heard of that. Yeah, and I saw them at Winco once, what? and I was a little tempted to try them, but like the way that my mom talks about them, it makes me. Definitely not want to, even though I'm pretty into exotic meat. Uh, yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, could be worse. Third and final follow-up. It could be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exotic meat could be into you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Can we make that <laughs> my parents listen to this? No, I'm, I meant getting eaten, eaten by a crocodile or something. Okay, this is just what, like the buffalo ball. What do you think I meant? I don't want to Okay. Um, third and final follow-up. Uh, a picture says a thousand words. We're going to show you two pictures. We're going to show you a picture of the Rexburg Pride Festival that happened a couple Saturdays ago. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side of Porter Park was a festival, I mean, or something, an an event called Prideful No More. And here's a photo of that. Right. Well, I know what party I'd go to. (laughs) Gays have the best parties. Yeah, Yeah. always, dude. Not to stereotype. (laughs) No, but they it's two people on a stage, a man and a woman looking rather lonely. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to make fun of them. And I'll just say that their outfits being were not nearly as good. Anti-pride or whatever. But in this day and age, you know, we we did get a couple of this month. Mm-hmm. We did when we wore our rainbow shirts or whatever. We got a couple of, yeah, I will say hateful comments. Yeah, I would just say Just from so. random YouTubers. YouTube is one of those places still on the internet where you can be anonymous. Right. And hide behind your anonymity mm-hmm. and make your hateful comments. And we actually had one of our gay friends defend us Mm -hmm. in the comments when they attacked us. I don't want to, you know, attack the people that held this thing that was against the thing or just an alternate voice to the thing because Mm -hmm. I love free speech. And they sure looked lonely sitting there all by themselves. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. And really, I mean, you could have dressed up at least. Right. You know, like, here's the thing. If you're going to do like an... You know, uh, an anti-whatever rally. Anti-pride kind of. And it's anything. Thing it looked like. 
if you're going to a place where you know the majority of people is going to be pro that thing, you've got to show up looking good. Like, you got to show up looking good, ready to party, like you're having a good time. It didn't look like they had a DJ or anything. Nothing. Yeah. Like, how are you going to convince these people over here who are with their their folks, you know, they're with their people having a good time. How are you going to convince them that you're right when you look so sad? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I know it's your party and you can cry if you want to, but that doesn't seem like a party. <laughs> it's just, it's not going to get anyone to come to your party. Right. Yeah. But there are those guys on the internet that are just sort of what I would call one note projectionists. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever been to a party where you maybe say something like, oh, how you doing? Oh, I'm tired. And they say, oh, you're tired. How about Sleepy Joe? Boy, that guy. Right. They'll take anything and turn it into politics, or they'll take anything and turn it into anti-whatever they're on this week. Right. Kind of like I was for a while with Ancient Aliens. (laughs) Kind of. Yeah, but at least yours is fun. Well, yeah, there was a person who made a political comment on our graduation video and a person who made a homophobic joke on our Buffalo video. Yeah. Like you, You have one note, you play it constantly, you have got to be annoying your friends and family so much that you turn to the internet and listen, one note projectionists, find a different note. At least. Like this. <laughs> or, or something. <laughs> That's how I feel about you. Yeah. But no, you know, I've got um post hijackers. <laughs> right. That's what they are. There are some folks in my circle who definitely do that. And they're the ones that I try really hard to not talk to too often because it gets so boring and it's like dude i'm sorry i want to talk about cats and fun things and have a good time i don't want to fight with you about politics frankly because i don't think that you're very educated and you don't know what you're talking about really i think that you've been so crammed full of someone else's opinion that you don't even know what your own is anymore it's a lot it's too too much of any one thing and i start to fall asleep right (laughs) it's not bubble Hey, yeah. Oh. Talk to her. <laughs> I, I was getting excited. I was like, Tony Hawk's on tour? <laughs> no. I kind of wondered if that's what it was, too. <laughs> like, I thought it had something to do with someone being on tour. Or like, yeah. Yeah. As you know, for our, the IFAF t shirts every week, mm-hmm. I like to rip off a famous logo. Which, by the way, that one might be my favorite so far. <laughs> Look, it's a it's Victoria's Secret pink mm-hmm. that we're ripping off. I'm sorry, paying tribute to. Here. <laughs> right, yeah. Parodying mm-hmm. under fair use yeah. Victoria's Secret. <laughs> um, right. But I, but I was like, is there a way we could hawk to a, where could I put a, the IFAF in that? <laughs> I'm not sure, but right? maybe we'll find a way. Yeah, honestly, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> Especially because, like, in general, like, if I'm going to go buy leggings or anything, that's where I got to go. Yeah. Because I got some tree trunks <laughs> up under here. <laughs> and if they're going to be rubbing together, they need some thick fabric, you know? Well, and it's a <laughs> it's a four-character brand name. Right. No four-character brand name is safe. <laughs> like, True. Like, we've done Nerf. Mm-hmm. Nickelodeon. Uh, Nick. But, like, the Nick one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I actually haven't worn that one yet, have I? Oh, yeah, because the yeah. freaking documentary came out, and I was like, I don't want to wear that. <laughs> yeah, right. Or do I? Somebody else said, dude, like, everybody's forgotten about that. Right. And it was, you know, 15 years ago, so how can you? Yeah. Right? right. And everybody still loves Nickelodeon. Yeah. I think. Dan Schneider came out with that weird response video that looked like it was written and directed by Dan Schneider. Yeah. You know, <laughs> maybe he should have brought out a ukulele for it. That would have oh. definitely helped. Who you're, you're uh, referencing? That was Colleen Miranda Sings. Okay. And she's a YouTuber. She is. Yeah. And she did this cringe apology. Yeah. On a ukulele. It was kind of an anti apology. Yeah. Yeah. It was more of a defense video. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was. And how's her career doing? It was not good. <laughs> if we ever get big enough to make an apology video, boy, that'd be weird. Yeah, it would be, but I mean, it's just not that hard. Like, just be a human being. Own it. Who feels bad for what you did. Learn from it, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still doing that in yeah. my personal life. Right. It's Ugh. not a mistake if we learn from it. Yeah, that's what they say, but I, it's it's kind of still a mistake. <laughs> right, but how long do you pay for a mistake? Ugh. I guess it depends on, you know, hmm. how big of a mistake it was. I mean, at 3 a.m., it doesn't matter how long ago it happened. 
You know, when you're laying in bed and it keeps running through your mind. Oh, yeah. You could have been four years old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Junior high moments come uh, back to, what was I thinking when I did that? Right, right. Yeah. You know, that whole saying of like, the only person who has to love you is yourself or like, at the end of the day, you're the only one who has to live with yourself or something. Right. What a bunch of bullshit that is. That's so unfair. What are you talking about? I'm the one who knows everything about me. I know all yeah. of my worst stuff. I should be the last person who has to live with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not right. Give it to somebody else for a while. <laughs> yeah. Carly, give it to Jesus. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Just put all your troubles on a blanket and lift it up to God. I don't know if that would work for that's, me. <laughs> that's actually, my mom uh, kind of walked me through that exercise when I was an anxious young teenager full of incredible angst and worries and things that I had All to those do. emotions, I get it. And and I realized... I I bet you were the I cutest wanna, little ball of angst. <laughs> I, I was. I, <laughs> I'm not sure about the cute part. But I realized part of that is when you have a bunch of problems and you just make a list. Right. You quantify the problems, and suddenly it makes it all manageable, like mm -hmm. the gorillas. Yes. Say. No, you make know what? All manageable. <laughs> You're absolutely right that that does. And I'm so sorry I kept giggling because the entire time I was thinking of like the horrible version of putting your problems on a blanket and lifting them up to Jesus. What's the horrible version of <laughs> uh, that? Okay, well, I was thinking, well, like. Hawk to <laughs> it first? <laughs> well, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> no. <laughs> How many times this episode are we going to say that? Um, Maybe it should be the name of our episode. Yeah, no, the thing that popped into my head, and I don't know why it did, but it was throw all your problems on the floor and waffle something down to Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll try to say that again without Either laughing. way, you just say it again. <laughs> uh, put all your problems on the floor and waffle stomp them down to Satan. I'll put all your problems... On the shower drain <laughs> and waffle stomp them on down. Either way, you're still quantifying so them sorry. first. Right. And that's the thing that makes them all manageable. <laughs> you know what? I do think it's kind of <clears throat> stupid that you're giving all your problems to God. You know, like he's supposed to be like the good guy, the benevolent being who gives you all of, all of the good stuff. And here you are just like sending problems he's gonna help. Way. He's going to help you with them. I get it. But also like... You know, if you're trying to get like, that's like if you have a best friend, all right, and you've got a craft closet full of crap mm -hmm. that finally you decide to get rid of and you give it to them. You're just giving them your problem so you don't have to deal with it. Like, that's not really how you treat a friend. I, I completely agree. <laughs> but that is how you treat a benevolent right. benefactor. All, all giving being. Sure, yeah, that's right. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. Like I and and I know there's been a few times in my life where I absolutely needed to have faith in something mm -hmm. outside of myself. Right. And I just couldn't do it on my own. I get that. Chicago. <laughs> but <laughs> I can't do it alone. <laughs> yeah. I just can't. What's the song? I don't remember. Catherine Zeta Jones is pleading oh, to Renee but Zellweger. I simply cannot do it alone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, sorry. I thought you Except meant in to this ban case, Chicago. <laughs> I was Catherine Zeta Jones and God was Renee Zellweger. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Shitty Analogies <laughs> on PBS, on NPR. Okay, I'm going to make one more point about my waffle stomping thing. Yeah. I feel Don't like, Google that. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like it has to be a better method of, you know, of exercising your problems because you're physically stomping them. And sometimes you need to let out that aggression a little. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like punching a pillow. You know, like if you're actively acting out the motions of wa waffle stomping your problems down to Satan, I feel like you're going to get some of that angry energy out. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. I'm just saying I think I've come up with a better solution. I know there's at least one person <laughs> listening right now taking mental notes. Okay, got to Google Hawk Tua. Well, I guess we showed you that. Yeah. And waffle stomping. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Man, <laughs> when my radio boss hears this, he's going to think I'm just the worst person. Oh, he, he's not going to listen to this one. Oh, I hope not. It's fine. Yeah. My mother's not going to listen. Right. Yeah. Because she's dead. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to say it, but it is. What she's it is. listening from heaven right now. And here's what, here's exactly what she's saying. Oh, Mike, <laughs> that is exactly Probably. what she's sh saying right now. <laughs> okay. I wanted to talk about something I've been hearing on the radio for the last six months. Oh yeah. 
and that is country crossover music. Yes. Holy cow. Yeah. It's sort of weird how much they're bleeding into each other, like all of the genres. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I used to always say the only two genres I don't like are country and rap because together they're crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I've been converted since then. <laughs> but I, I did feel that way, too. Right. But uh, about country and opera. And then I got an education one night. A buddy of mine stayed up uh, drinking uh-huh. uh, together. And we listened to, we just listened chronologically. He's like, this is uh, Robert Johnson mm-hmm. and some Delta Blues. This is Hank Williams. This is, and wherever we went from there. Right, right. You know? There are a couple of country songs that when I was younger that I would still listen to, even though I like refuse to admit that I kind of liked country. Well, and I know a lot of people are kind of mourning bro country. Right. I love it. I want to hear more about your truck and your girl and your dog <laughs> and a Friday night and a little bit of chicken fried. Yeah. And down to the honky tonk. I mean, it is fun. I cannot get enough of that shit. Yeah, it's a good time. Probably because I didn't have any in my... You know, earlier life. Right, right. But okay, just some examples. Yeah. Beyonce, no matter how you feel about her, she did uh, Texas Hold'em. Yeah. And it was huge. It's a bop. Um, the one that's on the radio right now, Kane Brown and Marshmallow, Miles on it. Yeah. Also super good. And like, can you imagine those two on stage together? Yeah. <laughs> like, they don't look like they match, but I mean, they make beautiful music, so. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and it's a jam. In fact, yeah. you know, we talked about songs of the summer last uh-huh. summer. Yeah. And I I would almost put Miles on it at the top of my list right now. I could see it. But there's the Shibuzi bar song. Right. Mm-hmm. It kind of a references, interpola- or interpolates, whatever. Um, Jay Kwan's Tipsy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jelly Roll Save Me. That was Really anything last by year, Jelly Roll. Dasha Austin, great song. Mm -hmm. Post Malone and Morgan Wallen, I had some help. So Post Malone, uh, I actually learned that he sang country like three or four years ago, something like hmm, oh, I was five years ago. I was not aware of that. A hot minute ago is the point, but like you know, I only knew him from his like pop and you know his big stuff, and then all of a sudden, my ex husband showed me a video of him singing a country song, and he was good, and I was like. Posty, is this what you were supposed to be doing the whole time? The dude's good. He's good. I think he I might be better at country, man. Okay, well, and, and I suppose we'll see because it seems he's gravitating that away. He kind of is. But I love like circles. Mm-hmm. And what was the one from the Spider Man Or was that it? Oh, no? uh, Sunflower. Sunflower, yes. Mm-hmm. That one is pretty good. He's so great. Yeah. His face looks like a um, high schooler's notebook. <laughs> right, right. But honestly, but, I think that adds to his charm. Well, and I didn't realize, I saw an interview with him on, uh, he was he was on one of the Jimmies. Yeah. And uh, kept saying Mr. Mm-hmm. And then told the story of how he got really good at music was he was uh, dope smoking and playing Guitar Hero, you know, like, <laughs> yes. like the kids did back then. Yeah. And uh, one day he just thought, this isn't getting me anywhere or getting me anything. Mm-hmm. What if I got as good at the real guitar Right. As I am a guitar hero. And so he did. Nice. See, I could never hit that orange button with my pinky. <laughs> so I'm probably never destined to play guitar. I'm going to try ukulele, though. Oh, there you if go. If I ever get some real free time on my hands, I've already decided that that's the first thing I'm going to try to learn. And then you can make an, a, cr- a cringy non-apology apology yes, video. And that's my entire plan. Hot. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, as I was thinking about these country crossovers, I thought, We've talked before about how Mm -hmm. music and fashion is on a 25-year cycle. Right. So it kind of went back in my mind to 1999. Mm -hmm. Country crossover. Faith Hill and Shania Twain were huge. Super huge. Also, Garth Brooks was really big at the time, too. Yeah. Yeah. And he was was big. I mean, he's still big. I think in the entire 90s. Yeah. Yeah. He's like the best-selling artist of all time or something. Yeah. He's incredible, honestly. You got to give the man his props. I I honestly love me some Garth Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually helped with his stadium tour in Boise. Okay. I was a stagehand for it. I had to like run on stage and move some instruments around for a second. It was actually really cool. That's super cool. But yeah, when he started (laughs) singing Friends in Low Places and the crowd was singing with him too, I was like, oh, this is why people like country. Oh. (laughs) And I wonder if, you know, people are just, with all the fake in the world, with all the Snapchat filters and and now AI, quick, (gasps) deep fakes. Wild, I know. 
you know, I wonder if people want to come back to something real and raw and sometimes personal. I think so. I mean, I know that there's a whole unplugged movement of people who are just trying to actively be off of their screens more, you know. And then I thought 25 years before 1999 was what? Oh, so that's 50 years ago now. It's 1974. Mm-hmm. And Kenny Rogers, Dolly mm-hmm. Parton were huge. Right. Yeah, you know, that nine to five. Right. Oh. It was that 80s. I think that was 80s, but 9 to 5 was one of my favorite shows as a kid. I don't know what it was. I honestly, I remember being kind of sort of mesmerized by Dolly's boobs (laughs) in it. It, It's You're like a deer in headlights. It's hard to look away. Yeah. Well, and also, like, I wanted to be her so bad. (laughs) Like, she came walking in just pointing in the direction she was going. Yeah. And I was like, damn, Dolly. (laughs) Well, you certainly got part of that. (laughs) Well, mine aren't quite as pointy. Spoiler alert, you're not blonde. Well, I'm not. <laughs> okay, one thing I wanted to throw out there, because I, I I don't know what made me think of it, but I thought, ooh, we should do this now before they actually come to town. Mm-hmm. And what I'm talking about is meat trucks. <gasps> yes. You know what I'm talking about? I do. The tents. Now, the last time they were in Idaho Falls, where I was paying attention, mm-hmm. I think at least, was maybe five years ago. Like, I haven't... The only stations I listen to are... Now 105.1 with my buddy Brad mm-hmm. and you on 96.1 and 102.1, The Wolf. Why, thank you. And and by the way, Don, thanks for playing Kane Brown and Marshmallow Miles on it. Right, which I love that you texted so, him when you could have just asked me. I could have. I should have. <laughs> yeah. But I thought um, last time they were in town, it was like, I think it was 20 ribeyes for $25. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm talking about. Apparently the steaks are this thin. Mm-hmm. They're like pinky thin. The stakes are not great. How do I know? Well, because I have read it. I have the internet. I have, there was a TV station, I don't know, in Poughkeepsie, Peoria, Paducah, Pawnee, somewhere uh-huh. that did a review. Okay. The meat's not good and it's super thin. Right. And who the hell would buy their meat from a meat truck or a meat tent anyway? Good Lord. Okay. I will great say. Great Scott. I have Good never- grief. <laughs> okay. Great honk. <laughs> Here's what I'll say. I have never bought my meat from a meat tent. I am interested in trying it because, as you know, I like an exotic meat. Yeah. And in its own way, this is exotic. Uh-huh. All right? It is. Um, but yeah, it, here's the thing. And if it's and anything like say, you describe it, this seems like it'd be perfect meat to make tacos with. Okay. And it might be. Yeah. Mix in with tacos, mm-hmm. some steak and eggs, maybe. Yeah. If you're yeah. feeding a family of 20. But like, you know, that nice thin slice and stuff works really good because then you just chop it up a little bit and you've got this perfect like steak taco. I don't disagree. But if you're looking for a deal, mm-hmm. uh, this probably isn't where you want to get it. Right. Is is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So I'm just speaking about these people in general before they come to town and you know they will. I want to know how much it's going to be this time around. If last time... Mm-hmm. Five years ago, it was 20 ribeyes for $25. It's got to be 20 for 40 now, right? Right. It's got to be. Yeah. At least something like that. You don't buy meat <laughs> by unit. You buy it by weight. Right. Right? I mean, that would make the most sense, I would think. Yeah. I mean, unless most of that weight is fat that you're going to cut off later. Like, hey, I'm going to give you 20 units of gold. Right. And then they're all gold flakes. For, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're units. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, yeah. that's a, probably another patented Mike Nelson shitty analogy. <laughs> and I guess you, you go in for the uh, the deal. Right. 20 ribeyes for $40 or whatever it's going to be this time around. And th- the first thing they do, I guess, is try to upsell you and go, mm-hmm. well, what about this $300 package right here? And then you get all of this. And I'll give it to you for 200 and then if you mm-hmm. say no, well, I'll also throw in the 20 ribeyes for, you know? Yeah, right. I think is kind of how it works. Well, I didn't mean for this to happen, but this is a perfect segue. <laughs> if you want good quality meat, man, do we have someone to tell you about? Check out this video. This is at a bonfire with Virgin River Land and Cattle Company and Lane. All right, Lane, what you got? <laughs> All right, so this is a dragon's breath out of a 410 Henry lever action <laughs> that burns at 5,000 degrees, and we're going to light this thing up. This is the thing we're lighting up. So I ask you, do you want a man who can shoot a 5,000 degree dragon's breath shot out of a 410 Henry level action in charge of your stakes? 
Of course you do. That was my best Sam Elliott. I thought that was great. Uh, right? <laughs> Certainly sells me more than some faceless factory worker. Virgin River proudly ships to six states, Idaho, Utah, Montana, Oregon, Wyoming, and Nevada. Find them on Facebook. Virgin River Land and Cattle Company drop promo code IFAF to save 15%. By the way, I don't know if you noticed our lovely little flower basket that we sponsored. It's on the corner of Shoop and A. It's right next to one of my personal favorite places to shop, Elsie's Closet. Now, Carly, let me ask you, is Elsie's Closet just a thrift store? It's not just to stop at the thrift. It's a whole vibe. All right, explain the tagline, upscale resale. I think I know what that means. It's trendy fashion that's budget friendly, too. I get it now. Okay. Matter of fact, it's Idaho Falls' only thrift store that's devoted entirely to women and women's fashion, regardless of size or age or anything like that. And the best part is, it's women-owned, so it's by women, for women. A lot of great stuff for summer. Shorts, skirts, dresses, crop tops, tanks. And if you're looking for a really amazing thrift store find, maybe you'll find it in their $2 bin. If you're on Yellowstone, just look for the pink sign on A Street. And use promo code IFAF. At checkout to save 15% off your total purchase. Well, since Mike messed up when Pioneer Day is, <laughs> and we actually have a whole month, why don't you go ahead and instead of pulling around your hand cart, go ahead and rent a drink cart and spend that holiday having your own little party. It's what the Pioneers would have wanted you to do. DIY Wedding and Event Rentals has all sorts of things to rent for your event including that drink cart. Call or text 208-403-2040. Drop promo code IFAF and save 15%. Summer's also a great time to sell your home and we're here to help. Yeah, sometimes life takes us in different directions. Maybe you're leaving for a job change. Maybe you're leaving for a life change. Maybe you're leaving because you believe that people in Idaho Falls don't want your kids to say please and thank you like the TikToker last week. <laughs> Whatever your reason, we got you. If you need to sell your home, Email info at ifafpod.com. That's info at ifafpod.com. Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan are brokered by Keller Williams Realty, East Idaho. It's kind of funny to me how shows lay out sometimes. Mm -hmm. Before we even do them, you can just kind of tell how it's going to go. Right. Like last week, we spent 15 minutes on Bozeman. And this week, we have no one big thing, but we have a ton of little things. Mm -hmm. So can we have sort of a rapid fire round? I love that. Honestly, I kind of like the little thing one because that, that way we can always expand it later, you know? Yeah. Okay, let's start with the thing I wish I would have said last week and completely intended to. Okay. Remember we were talking about McDonald's being the biggest offender in corporate price gouging disguised as inflation? Yes. Inflation in the last 10 years is up 31%. McDonald's prices are up 100%. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to say last episode, and of course I'm going to say this now, is that I'll bet you McDonald's reintroduces the value meal. Mm -hmm. They've done it. Right, right. And also, can I say, this is right after the whole Grandma McFlurry. Like, they're really trying to go all sweet and wholesome, as if we don't know. And I almost wonder, was that the plan the whole time? Like, okay, we're going we're gonna to just push and push and push our prices until yeah. the consumers push back, mm -hmm. and then we're going to be the heroes and save the day. Right. So well, this, And I kind of wonder if the Grandma McFlurry helped to start that, too. Because then you're taking Grandma to get a Grandma McFlurry, right? An and emotional. she's like, <laughs> Well, and she's like, well, back in my day, this only cost 25 cents. Right. <laughs> you know, and you're like, well, this costs like $4. <laughs> the $5 value meal debuts June 25th. McDonald's U.S. locations selling a McDouble cheeseburger or a McChicken sandwich, mm -hmm. small French fry, four-piece nugget, small soft drink. Five bucks. Which is really all you need. Yeah. And I think that's a pretty reasonable amount to spend on a fast food meal. I'm surprised they're throwing in the four-piece chicken nugget. This seems I mean, like a value without that even. Right? Don't get me wrong, McDonald's. <laughs> you know, uh, Wendy's had a similar one for a second. It was like the the four for five or something like that. Or I just wish yeah. I would have said it last episode. I know. So it was in my like notes. A foreseer. In, instead of like, you know, um, <laughs> Pioneer Day being... <laughs> 
today. You were ahead on one thing and behind on the other. You know, it, it just happens. You got to balance the universe somehow. We did try those new nuggies from Wendy's. The saucy nuggies. And they were good. Pretty good. The garlic parm were my <sighs> fave. They were really nice. I personally think I might have liked the buffalo ones just a little more. But I think it's just because I'm kind of a buffalo. I'm secretly a buffalo sauce kind of chick. You're a buffalo gal? Yeah, I'm a buffalo gal. <laughs> you like the you like to have your buffalo ball? I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> that means two things. Okay. <laughs> the triple berry frosty from Wendy's, pretty good. Oh, also super good. And uh, can I say that it feels like kind of a scam that one of those berries is not a blueberry? Yeah. Like, what's up with that? We looked into it because when I, we talked about this yes. off the pod, when I think of triple berry, I think of the most obvious ones. Right. Blue, straw, and rasp. Yeah. I know, rasp. I know. But it's, Don't even get me started there. But the, but the triple uh, berry is strawberry, raspberry. And blackberry. And blackberry. Yeah. Still good. Right. Let's show you some water tower progress. In fact, I'm going to show you three videos in quick succession. If you remember and been a long time watcher, here's the first time we checked it out. Mm -hmm. It was just a hole in the ground. Second time, a little bit of a nub. Third time. Couldn't even fit it all in in the video. Yeah, you had to pan up. Now, can I say that I do think that your um, camera skills here would be very well utilized as a professional dick pic photographer. <laughs> I made it look so big. You really did. And especially in the next video you're going to show, you can see like this is the same day, same video. Basically, it's almost just like a slightly I've had different practice. angle. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, I've never sent one of those. Never? Ever. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good for you. Is there a halo on top of my head now? So anyway, I had to back up a little bit <laughs> to get the whole water tower construction. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, there's that. I think it's kind of hilarious <laughs> that we're comparing this to phalluses when it it's kind of phallic. You kind of think that the new one's going to be a little um, penis-y. I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a shaft with a head. Am I describing the new water tower or am I describing a penis? Great, kid. Don't get cocky. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the next thing we have for you that I, d I didn't see because I live in Idaho. I saw this like on a national global meme site. Yeah. This is a smart goat at Yellowstone Bear World. Here we go. Watch Put this. It turns the quarter <laughs> of the feed machine. You can tell he's food motivated. Yeah. <laughs> food makes him smart, dude. <laughs> but from a consumer perspective, I mean, it's cool. to It's funny to see. Right. But that doesn't that, like, part of the thrill of getting the goat feed from the go goat quarter machine right. is feeling is the goat. Is getting to feed the goat. Is getting to feed the goat. Yeah. And, like, having their little lips sort of brush against your hand. Yeah. The, the thing you I really the like to do. a little, oh, okay, take it. <laughs> The thing I really like to do is I like to find the goats that don't seem as interested or who are clearly interested but can't get to the front of the pack. Always. So I like Always. to find that little guy and give it, like, push the others aside and give it to him. <laughs> In a couple months, it's going to be Eastern Idaho State Fair time. And I'm I so excited. Always hook up the little babies, little underdogs. Yeah. Okay. Next up. Taco Bell on 17th is being remodeled right now. I was so worried for a second when I saw the fence around it. Yeah. I was like, where are people going to get their Yokieto? They're yeah. <laughs> What if they are Kieroing some Taco Bell Mas Rapido? Right. What are you going to do? You have to drive all the way to one side of town or the other? Yeah, you got to go to Such the extreme crap. edges of town. Remember, there's a new one on the corner of Sunnyside and mm -hmm. I-15, basically. Right. Right there. Okay, what else? Theo Vaughn, his second show. He, so he has a sold-out show the 29th mm -hmm. of uh, this month. It's coming right up. Right. And he decided to do a second show on the 27th that we got tickets for. Canceled. Now, this is the second show that you've got, gotten us tickets for that's been canceled on us. The Chicago. first one was Chicago in January. It was supposed to be my birthday gift. Idaho Falls Arts Council. And then they were like, oh, we're going to delay it. And then, oh, never mind. You guys, we're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say that. They didn't, but they kind of did <laughs> with their action. <laughs> so the second, the second Theo Vaughn show to be added, but the first one chronologically has mm -hmm. now been canceled. But good news, comedy fans. Fluffy is coming. Gabriel Iglesias to the Mountain America Center on October 17th. I mean, I like Fluffy. I think Fluffy's fun. Saw him at the fair a couple of times. Yeah. Not for everyone. 
I know you're not a big fan. I just don't think he's funny. I don't think he's unfunny. Mm-hmm. I don't hate him. I don't loathe him. Mm-hmm. I just don't think I could watch him for an hour and just kind of go. <laughs> and, and and I know that's almost an insult to me. <laughs> okay. Than it is to his fans, mm-hmm. you know, because I know I don't. It takes things like the boys, right, to, to really get entertain a rise me. Out of you, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the boys, <gasps> season four is awesome. Oh, it's so good. There is a scene to I wouldn't say rival the wed re, the the red wedding, <laughs> but close. I mean, I would definitely agree. There's a guy yeah. who duplicates himself and also does other things to himself. <laughs> Bizarre. Just weird. bizarro tastic. Lots of gross little worms under the skin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't watch it if you're like high or something, because it'll freak you out, man. <laughs> that's, do you know that from experience? <laughs> no, no. I would never even dare. And the, the suck <laughs> thing is, it's not over yet. There's four more episodes. Right. But only four are out so far. Yeah. We're getting another one later this week, thankfully. Bridgerton season three. Oh, awesome. So good. I loved so it. So good. Absolutely man, loved it. And Penelope. As I Lady Whistledown. I love her. And every single dress she wore was just slamming. They all looked so good. Yeah, that final ball at the <gasps> end. You loved I that. I loved that. Don't even get Carly started. The costuming. It's like, that's the thing. Honestly, realistically, it's a fluffy love story that really, it's like, it's not rocket science to write it. All right. But man, the actors. The costuming, it brings it all to life and it makes it feel so good. And you just get to watch fancy people do fancy things and it's nice. It is a fun little ton. It is. Isn't Bridgerton? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> we'll watch it and I'll start speaking in a British accent and God, request some thing. tea. <laughs> the solstice was last week. It was. Longest day of the year. It's all downhill from here. I wish I would have done something special for it, but I didn't. Probably should have like charged my chakras or put my moonstones out to... Use my sound bowls. Yeah, danced your around bowls. naked in the moonlight. I mean, I've heard good things about that. It's supposed yeah. to be really good for your glands. But not, you know, until like eleven. Yeah, right. Yeah. When the sun That's is the thing, man. I'm too old to stay up late enough to dance in the moonlight. <laughs> yeah. You know, when the sun is setting at nine and realistically it's actually getting dark at ten, like, nah, it's bedtime, man. Yeah. Like I'm cozy. By then. 10 is typically when the fireworks start, Mm -hmm. and it's almost July 4th, which means next episode, episode 50, that's going to be our anniversary. One year anniversary. Can you believe it? Wild, huh? We might have a mini sewed in between now and then Mm -hmm. with something. I'm not sure what. Yeah. But may or uh, may not. Depends on how much we like you. (laughs) The fireworks will start at Snake River Landing in Idaho Falls around 10 p.m. Mm hmm. They never want to give an exact time, no. but it's always around 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. And the okay, our friends at the Life in Idaho Falls Facebook group, they're the ones we always post an episode to when it comes out on a weekly right. basis. Oh, in fact, they're using our photo of the Northern Lights. Mm-hmm. From when we went up on Bone Road. Yes, the Aurora Borealis. That's mm-hmm. their cover photo right now. Thanks, Barbara and Colton. Um, they had a pretty funny post about fireworks. There's three kinds of people, they said. Oh, yeah? The first kind is let freedom ring, chili dogs all around, fire in the hole, sky's the limit, Merca. <laughs> right? Second kind of people. Got an uncle like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uncle Mike. Yes. <laughs> who's really good at smoking and grilling meats. Oh, he's so good. Yeah. Fantastic. His brisket. Mm-hmm. Um, the second kind, the vets and pets people. Yeah. That complain about the noise and want the entire world to suspend their celebration. In fact, I think while recording this, we heard a couple fireworks go off, did yeah. we not? Yeah, I thought we did. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I know I feel for you guys. I feel for vets and pets. I don't think like, okay, one year we were at the fireworks and I won't say which one, but the audio that played along with them started with machine gun fire right and like helicopter and war sounds yeah yeah and i thought boy if you want to if you want to honor the vets at all yeah you don't recreate wartime sounds right that's the last thing you want to do like maybe one has just finally worked his way up where he knows he can go to this and he's like you know what every time i hear a pop i'll know it's a firework it's fine and then you play that and just completely derail his road to recovery oh man and then the third type, which are the, you know, the moderates. We are Switzerland, America. We blow off moderate bang bangs and are done by 1030 and yeah. try to ignore 
type one and type two. Well, and also with modern technology, there's no reason that we need to do fireworks anymore to have just as visually stimulating of a show. Now, I like the sonic booms and stuff. Sure. They're not actual sonic, but I like the booms. yeah. Yeah, you like the vibration from it. But I do love the drones. I'm not seeing cool. enough drones in our fireworks. Let's get on it. I mean, I'm just saying that is the perfect solution. It's cool AF. You know, it's techie. Like, they get a whole swarm of, boom, right? of 100, 2, 3, 4, 500 and drones up there. It's nice and quiet. Yeah. And it looks super rad. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody's going to be yeah. watching that. I'm just saying, I can't wait for all of us to be so good at drones that we can recreate that scene from Megamind where he, like, it's all the drones in the shape oh, of his head, and then he yes. walks out on his own tongue. <laughs> Just saying, man. That, like, as, like, when I was young and I was watching that, I was like, that is the coolest thing I've ever even conceptualized in my entire life. If we could make that really Only happen. Make it like Homelander. Yeah. That'd be oh. sweet. Okay, but he's afraid a, of heights. Have a fight with Homelander. Yeah, I saw that video this <laughs> right? week, too. Between Homelander and Captain America. There we go. That's That'd good. Be so cool. That'd be sick. Also, Homelander would probably kill Captain America, dude. Captain, eh. Captain America doesn't have no laser vision. Homelander's the spoiler alert bad guy. Well, I, know, I think I think still. truth and justice would prevail. I th- I'm mm. with Captain America all the way. I mean, I've seen it not happen too many times. Who's better looking, Chris Evans or Matthew Starr? Uh, Matthew Starr, honestly. What? I know he's got those crazy eyes, especially when he's playing Homelander. Uh-huh. But honestly, I've never thought Chris Evans was very hot. What? And part of it, too, is that my First boyfriend kind of sort of looked like the Wish version of him. If you ordered Chris Evans <laughs> off of Wish. Yeah. And so after seeing that, I was like, mm, or no. Temu. <laughs> yeah. Like, pass. Okay. But somebody asked on the same group, hey, quick question. Where is the fireworks stand that sells the illegal fireworks, but sign a waiver, not Fort Hall? Heard it was Woodruff Avenue area TIA. Thank you in advance. Um, uh, are you trying to get people arrested, bruh? So I don't know. You narc? Is this a thing? Can this happen? Is it here? And I don't. I don't know. We haven't confirmed it. I know. Usually, you have to for the good stuff. Uh-huh. For the stuff that flies in the air. Right. And explodes, you got to go somewhere where it's legal. You got to go to the reservation or mm-hmm. Alpine, Wyoming. Right. Those are the two closest places. Yeah. I think Utah was the same way. You had to go to Cheyenne. Mm-hmm. So, which I don't get because I think Wyoming has more forested area. Than we do here, right? Or no, <laughs> right. I don't know. It's not a contest, but Wyoming has freaking well, Yellowstone. But to be fair, too, we are drier here. Okay. You know, we got a lot of like desert grasslands and stuff. I don't know if that's true, but I'll believe you. I think. I mean, but, it looks like it. <laughs> but so I'd like to know, but somebody said, um, yeah, it's near I Pole, near the corner of Yellowstone and Iona mm-hmm. in the Jones Motorsports parking lot. Okay. So that's I mean, one thing to go check out. We want to get you the message before July 4th in gonna, case we're right. Well, and I was going to say we should go there soon before they get shut down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like really when when I read that post, I was like, okay, is this like a 21 Jump Street scenario? Like, are you walking up like, hello, fellow kids? Right. You know? I like, don't know how this is working. You, you want to buy some yeah. fireworks? Yeah. It feels a little bit like if someone was like, hey, does anyone know a really good drug dealer here in Idaho Falls? Right. Why would you post that? <laughs> right. <laughs> Speaking of vices, Pornhub is blocking Idaho July 1st. Oh, really? Along with a few other states, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Nebraska. I don't know what it's about. It's in response to some age verification laws, which I don't understand. Well, I mean, I have heard of somewhere you have to like upload a picture of your ID to prove that you're old enough. Okay. And like, who's going to do that? Right. You know? Right. So. Bummer. Ladies, if your husband is just sitting on the couch randomly one night and you hear, honey, I think we're going to get a VPN. That's what that's about. <laughs> it's messed up well i love napoleon dynamite we both do oh yeah we went last year Uh uh-huh to see them do their 20th anniversary screening it was the coolest and i guess they were a little ahead of the curve because it was oh four and so now this year is the 20th anniversary of napoleon dynamite and john heater is in a brand new ad for orida potatoes (laughs) take a look 20 years later still haunted by crushed tots now from Orida comes top protecting pants. Jeez. So it's an ad for tater tot protecting pants. Dude, give me your tots. Yeah. <laughs> 
He run it over with a van. <laughs> Which I loved that little callback. Uncle Rico's van. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know if you caught the disclaimer at the bottom saying, may not protect your tots from... <laughs> from a van. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which was funny. Now, they're actually selling these pants, right? For sa- They are for sale. Lincoln Post. I'm so mad yeah. that these weren't available last year when we went to the thing because I did dress up as Napoleon, <laughs> yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> yeah, first off, yeah, I the just- The vote for Pedro shirt and everything. Right. And I just wore like plain old regular jeans, just what I had. And um, they were a little tight because I got a little chonky lately. <laughs> so I ended up having to like yeah, unbutton man. them during the show because otherwise I was going to suffocate. <laughs> so yeah, something like these. Where Uncle I Rico been, was checking you out. Yeah, where I could have been just as stylish. <laughs> they do look, yeah, they do look like what was hot back then, mm-hmm. which were those, or what was hot in Preston, Idaho back then, <laughs> right. which was actually nine or 10 years after the hammer pants. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're wrapping up our rapid fire round. A couple more things. Crispy cones uh-huh. that we loved so much in Rexburg. I'm so excited about this. Getting a location in Idaho Falls. We don't know when. We don't know where. I wonder if it's going to be by Bobolov and that's going to become like the little Rexburg strip mall. That'd be hot. Oh, man. Get a if we curry got a, pizza? I was going to say, if we got a curry pizza there, I'd lose my shit. <laughs> I'd never have to go to Rexburg again. Oh, that'd be amazing. Except to sell homes. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. And finally, the Playmill Theater will soon have a new location. After 61 years? Which is so exciting. And And it's going to be closer to us. It gets even better. It's going to be closer to us in Mm -hmm. Island Park. They say it's the Max Inn area, 4111 South Big Springs Loop Road. Oh, that's by um, Henry's Fork. That's just south of Henry's Fork. That's by the Cafe Sabor there, I believe. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be even closer. It's going to be like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes South of West Yellowstone, nice. closer to us. They said most of their business comes from Idaho Falls anyway. Right. So it makes sense. I mapped the address. It's like 85 minutes away. Oh, that's nothing. How about that? That's nice. Now, that being said, because they're moving, I feel like we have to try to go to the one that currently exists. This is their final season well, in West we Yellowstone. Can. Yeah. And I bet tickets are close to sold out. <sighs> we should try. If not sold out, let's try. Yeah. I know that... The Hale family has a couple of kids in Oklahoma this year. Right. Well, and I've I've lived here my entire life, and I've never been to the play mill. I'm ashamed to admit, neither have I. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I feel like it's... Yeah. I feel like we should. I had a cousin who went to a theater camp there once. Especially since we're kind of a couple drama kids. We totally are. At heart. (laughs) Okay. And a couple more things before we wrap up our show, starting with, we got ourselves a road rage incident, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Check this out. So if you didn't see it at the beginning of the video, you can either trust us or rewind and see it with your own special eyes. The driver that gets rammed uh, threw something out at the window. Yeah, out of that's their window. what it looks like. And there's a TNT Lawn Services truck that rams a car. Which like that rams that car? I mean, <sighs> it did, it doesn't look like they bashed the tail end in, but they were they revved up as both yeah. cars were moving and hit the back of this car. Which just like what a boneheaded move, dude! It is so easy to lose control of a car if you like hit the corner wrong or something. They could have killed people. Yeah. Realistically, like it doesn't matter what they were doing in those cars because basically, as soon as this video came out, there was some discourse over whether or not these people deserve to get rammed. Yeah. Why did the video start conveniently right here at this point? Right, right. And I get that. I do. And realistically, it's not impossible that the people in the other cars were being total shits. But regardless, this was not the move, dude. So TNT Lawn Services actually replied to the video saying, what this doesn't show is the fact you and your friend were throwing garbage out the window at our truck, slamming on your brakes, swearing, yelling profanities. That's the same as swearing, isn't it? Right. And you were given the reckless driving ticket per the witnesses. Mm -hmm. So obviously there was more going on here. But you don't ram anybody for any reason. Right. Like at that, at that point, dude, just pull over. Let them get some space in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yikes. There's just... Two wrongs don't make a right right. in this instant. And there's no way that it turns out well for anyone if you do that. Yeah, you both look like idiot moron assholes. Right. Well, and the worst part, too, is like TNT doesn't come out of this looking good by defending their employee, which sucks. No, no. It sucks, you know? They say we have addressed any issues on our side with the crew. I hope so. Yeah, I would certainly hope so, too. Did you give them a stern talking to? (sighs) 
I we, mean, <laughs> we would appreciate it if you would stop calling the office and leaving profanity on the voicemail system. This doesn't resolve anything. When it comes to something like this, where people could like actually get physically hurt, like a clap back might hurt your feelings, but it's not going to land you in the damn hospital. I'm trying to think of any situation in which ramming into the car in front of you would be okay, and I can't think of a blessed one. I can think of exactly one because I saw a video of it. Okay. So there were these two cars. It's like a dash cam video, and you're in the POV dash cam car. A car in front of them stops while they're in this underpass, so they're locked in. They can't go anywhere but forward. They stop in front of them. Four guys pile out of the car and start coming oh, yeah. toward. Yeah. And so that guy drives forward. The people scatter because they're going to get hit otherwise. And I think he kind of rams the back and like the This doors is like in Russia or something. Something like that. Yeah. Terrifying. Some, some country where they have lots of insurance scam artists. Oh, no, no. It, wasn't, it didn't and look people like that an insurance can disappear scam. you. It looked like it was an attack. Right. No, but I'm but saying yeah. there is a proliferation of dash cam videos oh. in Russia in particular. Yes, because of that. Because of the, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, that'd be terrifying to have like four right? mobsters, gangsters come <gasps> out at you. Yeah. In that case, ram away. Yes. And finally, let's end our show with a tale of teenage mischief. <laughs> One Bonneville High School student, Jory Anderson's graduation prank. <laughs> Maybe you saw this on our shorts or our reels, whatever, uh, TikToks last week. He was at graduation. He mm-hmm. tripped and tumbled dramatically off stage while collecting his diploma. Check this out. Oh. So I actually thought that this was real when I first saw it. I didn't realize it was supposed to be a prank. Yes, a lot of people did. Jory said he wanted to end his high school career with a bang. (laughs) And you can actually, did you hear his sister laughing in there? (laughs) Right, I did, I did. That's his sister, Jade, Mm -hmm. who did the taping. And um, yeah, Jory said, it happened so fast, but I remember getting it. He over, it looks like he overdid it a little bit. Right. Like, I do kind of wonder if he meant to fall off the stage. Yeah, I think he meant to trip and fall, but he went completely (laughs) off the stage. Right, right. But, bro, that's a full commitment (laughs) to the bit. And we got to hand it to you this Mm -hmm. week. You are IFAF. Crisp high five. 21 finger gun salute and chef's kiss. To you. To your little prank there. (laughs) And your sister, who's hilarious. It's her laugh that kind of cued me, mm-hmm. teed me up a little bit and made me think, oh, wait a minute here. The person okay. videoing this knows the guy and knows what's up. Here's the thing, though. Okay. If my brother actually did trip on accident and fall off the stage, I, too, would be laughing. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's what siblings do, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they mock your pain. Yeah. Did you ever have any high school pranks? Um, memorable high school pranks that actually I did pull one. Oh, you did? I thought it was very clever. What'd you do? It was not. I bought a thing of plastic dinosaurs and hid them around the school on my last day of school for the next year to find. That's right. Okay, I mm-hmm. we this was it one of the last episodes we mentioned it, it like a year been. ago almost. Yeah. Yeah, and I put them in some pretty obscure places. Like I think I put one under the sink in the women's bathroom or something. Like you weren't gonna find that unless you were a plumber, right? <laughs> yeah. Where you would find the little a little Jesus that we yes. follow on Instagram. Yeah, this little guy. <laughs> These days. Yeah. Hold up the little Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> we see him everywhere. Yeah. You can find him on Facebook, I think. Yeah, Instagram. I basically I I did the um not creationist version of I did the evolution <laughs> <laughs> version of that. <laughs> Sorry. The dinos. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um and I think in my high school once like a student brought some milk in a Tupperware container like on the first day of school. Uh huh. Forgot about it for a couple of weeks, so then decided to keep it in his locker all year. And I don't know who did it. Maybe Kevin knows. Kevin, do you know? That is foul. Yeah, opened it up on the last day of school, cleared out dear old IF high. <laughs> okay. Like, it was nasty. It was a it was a biohazard emergency. But was there a specific reason why he brought a Tupperware full of milk? I did want. Was he planning on drinking it? Maybe he had some cookies in his lunchbox. I don't know. Forgot. Yeah, maybe he just had Homelander type tendencies. (laughs) Maybe, maybe. Well, that's our show. 
We'll see you when we're a year old <laughs> in terms of this podcast and in terms of maturity. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube. There's a special link in post. Lincoln Park. Lincoln President. Lincoln Logs. Lincoln Car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>